Hi everyone, my name is Ira from Easily Made Patterns and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous sheer dress. I'll be making two dresses, one for myself and one for my little daughter. You can find the pattern through the link down below. Women's sizes are from 0 to 20, which is 34 to 54 European sizes. And for kiddos, I have sizes from 0 months to 8 years. And now, if you've never done shrimp before, this type of bodice may look complicated, but it is so easy. And I'm going to show you all the steps to achieve this effect. It is a bit boring to make all those rows of stitches, but it is pretty simple. So, let's start! To make this dress, you will need woven fabric. I'm using quilters cotton, but any lightweight woven fabric will work. I'm going to be doing two dresses, one for myself and a cute pink one for my daughter. You will need an elastic thread to do the shearing. Also, if you're doing puff sleeve, you will need a quarter inch wide elastic. First step is to cut all the pattern pieces from fabric of your choice. I will be using projector format for this task, which saves me a ton of time. But all my patterns also come in regular printed home format that can be printed uh, on your home printer or in a copy shop. You should have two dress pieces, one front and one back. They are similar looking, so mark which one is front, which one is back. First, I'll show you how to make shirt sleeves. For this style, you'll only need two sleeve pieces. If you'd like to add uh, inseam pockets, you will need four pocket pieces. Start by finishing curved row edges on each one of your pockets. I use serger for this, but you can use a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Now take your dress piece, front or back, doesn't matter. It should have two marks, one on each side, that show you where the pocket should start. So take your pocket piece and pin it to the front and back panels right sides together, starting from the marks. Now stitch pocket to the dress with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance along the straight edge. Don't forget to back stitch. Now finish the long row edges of the dress panel with serger or zigzag stitch. Take your dress and press the pocket open so that the right sides are facing outwards. Now sew a straight line of stitches on the pocket to attach it to the dress panels just an eighth of an inch from the seam. This will make sure that your pockets won't be visible on the outside when you wear your dress. Now place the dress pieces right sides together and pin the sides. Now sew down the side seams and the curve of the pocket. Now fold the top edge of the front and back dress pieces a quarter of an inch wrong sides together and press with iron, then fold the top over another half an inch and press, and sew along the inner fold to keep this top hem in place. Thank you. 
Now let's get to the fun part, which is shearing. So take the elastic thread and uh, wind the bobbin. It is best to do this by hand, the same way I do this, because the elastic does stretch and if you're using the machine to wind the bobbin, you may stretch it out too much. So take the empty bobbin and wrap the elastic thread around it. It will take a while, <laughs> but um, you want to gently wrap it, uh, making sure you're not stretching the elastic thread too much. Then, once you're finished, you'll probably need a couple more, like two or three bobbins for an adult dress and maybe one or two for a kid's dress. So you can prepare those in advance. Well, this is what it should look like. Before you start working with your dress, take a piece of scrap fabric, a rectangular piece, and draw two guidelines, 10 inches or 30 centimeters apart. And now we will do shearing, which is basically just sewing several parallel rows of stitches with an elastic thread that will gather the fabric. Increase the thread tension and stitch length on your machine. Each sewing machine is different. For me, what worked is uh, the highest tension that my machine had, which is 20, uh, when normal is 8, and the stitch length uh, 3.5 when normal is 2. Load the bobbin with an elastic thread into your machine, just the same way as you would do with the regular thread. Starting in the first guideline that you drew, sew a straight line until you reach the second guideline, backstitch at the beginning and at the end. Then lift your presser foot, line up the presser foot to the last row of stitches and repeat. This way your rows of stitches will be approximately 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter apart. Repeat until you have 10 rows of parallel stitches. After shearing, your fabric should have gathered and shrunk by 50%, making the two guidelines now 5 inches or 15 centimeters apart. If your fabric has gathered too much, increase the upper thread tension on your machine. If your fabric has not gathered enough, so your guidelines are more than 5 inches apart, you can reduce the tension. Mine are exactly 5 inches apart, so this is perfect, and I can move on to shearing the dress. Take your dress and working with the right side facing up, start your first row of shearing stitches by stitching alongside the fold of the top hem. When you get to the end of the row, sew, reverse, then sew a few stitches to anchor the thread in place, then move the presser foot along for the next row, lining up the presser foot to the last row of stitches. Keep repeating until you reach the last shearing row on the pattern. And that's what the final result should look like. And we've finished with the top. To the bottom hem, fold the bottom a quarter of an inch, wrong sides together, press with iron, then fold the bottom over another half an inch and sew along the inner fold to keep the hem in place. And that's it for the dress, all we need to do is to add sleeves. I have two options for sleeves, puff sleeves and shirt sleeves. I will first show you how to do shirt sleeves. 
Start by folding the top hem quarter of an inch wrong sides together, press it with iron, then fold the top hem over half an inch, press with iron, do the same thing for the bottom, fold it once, quarter of an inch, then fold it once more, half an inch, and sew along the inner fold to keep top hem and bottom hem in place. Next step is to do shearing for the sleeve. You can do it the same way as you did for the bodice or for your convenience you can draw parallel rows of stitches and use them as guides when shearing. We will be shearing the entire sleeve from top to bottom. You will start your first row of shearing stitches by stitching alongside the fold of the top hem of the sleeve and keep repeating until you reach the bottom hem. And that's the final result. Fold it right sides together vertically and pin in place. And then sew the side seam with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. You would also want to finish the raw edge using a serger or a zigzag stitch. Turn your sleeve right side out. Pin the single notch on the sleeve to the top edge of the front bodice. Then pin the double notch on the sleeve to the top edge of the back bodice. Match the seam of the sleeve to the side seam of the bodice, right sides together. Pin in place and pin all the way around the armhole. Sew so sleeve to the bodice along the armhole. Remember to backstitch at the beginning and at the end, and finish the seam using a serger or a zigzag stitch. And that is what it should look like. Repeat for the second sleeve, and you're all done if you're doing a sheared sleeve dress. Now let's move on to the puff sleeve. This is what it will look like. It's very cute, but a little bit tricky but it doesn't require shearing, which is nice. Let's start by pressing the bottom edge of the sleeve a quarter inch, wrong sides together, then fold the edge of the sleeve further one inch, again wrong sides together, press it with an iron to create a memory fold. Now fold the sleeve right sides together vertically and the memory folds that you've just created earlier should be unfolded. Pin in place and sew the side seam with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Finish the raw edges using a serger or a zigzag stitch. Now fold the bottom of the sleeve along the memory folds that you've created. And so along the inner edge of your fold, leaving one inch opening in the casting to insert the elastic. Measure 3 eighths of an inch down from the first line of stitching. And so around the entire circumference of the sleeve. Cut a piece of elastic according to the elastic length chart that you can find in tutorial. 
Attach a safety pin to each side of the elastic piece. Pin one right outside of the sleeve casting opening and use the other safety pin to guide the elastic through the casting. Overlap two ends of the elastic by half an inch and sew the elastic ends together using a wide zigzag stitch. Now distribute the elastic evenly and uh, sew the hole closed. Now let's attach sleeve to the bodice, turn it right side out. You will find that there are two notches, one double notch and one single notch on each side of the sleeve. Match the seam of the sleeve to the side seam of the bodice, right sides together, pin in place. Then pin the single notch on the sleeve to the top edge of the front bodice, like this. And pin the double notch on the sleeve to the top edge of the back bodice. Continue pinning bodice to the sleeve along the armhole. You might need to stretch the bodice a little bit to fit the sleeve. Sew sleeve to the bodice along the armhole. Remember to backstitch and finish the seam using a serger or a zigzag stitch. For the next step, take your binding piece and fold both short edges a quarter of an inch wrong sides together, press with iron. Now fold each long row edge a quarter of an inch toward the center and press to create memory folds. Next we will attach binding to the sleeve. Align the raw edges of the sleeve with the bias tape and align the folded short edge of the binding to the top of the front and back bodice. Pin in place. And then pin all the way around the raw edge of the sleeve. Now sew a quarter of an inch from the raw edge along the memory fold. Press the binding and seam allowance upward and away from the sleeve. Now fold the bias facing to the inside. Use your fingers to carefully fold under the raw edge of the bias strip along the memory fold, like this. So now binding is not visible from the right side, it's not visible from the outside. It should be all on the inside of the sleeve and pinned in place as you fold it. Stitch close to the inner folded edge of the bias facing to attach binding to the sleeve. And that's how it should look like. The binding is on the inside, all edges are carefully folded, and this will be a casting for our shoulder elastic. Add a piece of elastic according to elastic length chart that you will find in the tutorial. Attach a safety pin to each side of the elastic piece. Pin one right outside of the bias tape opening and use the other safety pin to guide the elastic through the casting.
pin elastic in place with a, just a quarter of an inch of it extending beyond the bias tape on both sides. Now with the right side up, stitch several back and forth stitches to secure the elastic. This is what it will look like, just a small bar tack on each side and repeat for the other sleeve and you're done.